okay so one so next we will look at the micro plant interaction the example that we'll be looking at is the symbiotic relationship between rumen microbes and ruminants uh, for example cows so ruminants are uh, the animals that have special digestive vessels also known as rumen so it's like an extra stomach okay. so this extra stomach actually has anaerobic bacteria that helps the, the animal digest cellulose so the rumen size in a cow can be up to 150 liters okay so it's 150 liters but you don't actually see 150 liters because the the rumen is folded okay it's folded so when you open it all up it can fit 150 liters but it's actually folded so because when it's folded the of course you learn when you folded the surface to surface to volume ratio is uh, more suitable you you it's more efficient when it's folded okay. so this is a symbiotic relationship and it has evolved over time that means because be, for example, cows without rumen microbes cannot survive because they need rumen microbes to digest the cellulose. Because cows are herbivores, so they need the bacteria to digest the food. Okay? Whereas the rumen microbes have evolved to become anaerobes that are, that are already suited to grow. Uh, in Romans. Okay. So the rumen is anoxic, 39 degrees Celsius with a pH of 6.5. Okay. The most important thing is it is stable. So it's like a very, uh, it's like a fermenter fixed at 39 degrees Celsius with a fixed pH also. So it is a fermenter for the rumen. Um, bacteria so the among the bacteria in the rumen the important ones are uh, fibrobacter succinogens and ruminococcus albus the example here given is because one has a periplasmic cellulase so this the cellulase for fibrobacter is attached to the cell Whereas for ruminococcus, the cellulase is secreted. It's an exoenzyme. It's secreted out. Okay. So among these two, probably the fibrobacter is more efficient because the cellulase is always nearby. Okay. So that's why sometimes uh, grass that is grazed, okay, by the cow and pass into a reticulum before going into the rumen. So, so grass that is grazed will be in a reticulum before going into the rumen. So in the rumen, food is mixed with saliva and churned in rotary for motion for 9 to 12 hours okay so later on we'll see the importance of saliva so if you see here it's churn in rotary motion so typical of a fermenter good mixing uh, constant temperature constant conditions for the bacteria to grow well okay from 9 to 12 hours so the churning motion helps grind the cellulose, assist in microbial attachment. 
So once it once uh, it has ground the cellulose and the bacteria has attached to it for up to nine to twelve uh, hours, uh, the grass it becomes a curd. Okay. Then the curd is brought back into the reticulum, regurgitated and rechewed in the mouth. So it comes back into the mouth and rechewed before it goes to the goes back to the reticulum. So sometimes if you have the chance to observe uh, cows, uh, you will realize that sometimes it just sits there and chews. Although you haven't seen it eating in a long time, it just sits there and chew. So it's chewing, it's chewing something that is regurgitated. Okay, it's chewing it uh, to make it smaller, to further grind it, okay, and also to further mix it with a saliva and then re swallow it. Okay, so it's the next stage is it goes to the omasum and abomasum where the chemical digestion begins. So these are where the, the acidic stomach is. So this is where the uh, digestion begins. Okay. So the omasum and abomasum is the is where the acidic stomach is. So if you look here, after digestion, it goes to the uh, small intestine. And along this path, uh, there is absorption. Even in the rumen itself, there is already absorption. So feed that is digested, there are bacteria in the rumen. You have cellulolytic and amylolytic bacteria. So the feed is digested into cellulose and other hexose first. Then in the rumen, the fermentation of this hexose is via homo and heterofermentative pathways and the tunnogenesis. Because of this, you have end products such as CO2 and methane, okay, that are removed through eructation. Eructation is also uh, uh, the it's like fart, okay, F A R T, through the the cows, okay. So this also contributes to the global warming problem because the amount of uh, CO two and methane from these animals can actually be substantial especially for countries such as Australia and, uh, and New Zealand because they have a lot of uh, cows and uh, sheep. So all these animals also contribute to the uh, methane emission and also carbon dioxide emission that contributes to global warming. Okay. So throughout the rumen, process, uh, volatile fatty acids will be produced, acetate, propionate, and butyrate, and these are actually absorbed across the rumen well, uh, wall and used up by the animals. Okay, so this uh, shows the uh, homo and heterofermentative pathways simplified. So the bacteria what is symbi is symbiotic. 
So the bacteria helps in the digestion of cellulose. So it's a relationship that has evolved over time. So the cows cannot survive without the bacteria. Okay, and the bacteria is already well adapted to uh, living in a rumen. So uh, it's a relationship that has evolved over long periods of time. So the bacteria helps in the digestion, whereas the cow provides the habitat and also the, the initial substrate, the grass for the bacteria. Okay, other than uh, bacteria, rumen has also uh, other types of microorganisms. You have protozoa. So protozoa can also hydrolyze cellulose and starch. Okay. But the protozoa can also function to help control bacterial density. Because protozoa in the environment uh, Grace of is a predator for bacteria. So it protozoa in the natural environment eats up bacteria. So in the rumen it helps control the bacterial population so that there is no uh, overpopulation of bacteria. So other than the uh, protozoa, you also have fungi. So the fungi also ferments cellulose. For example, research in rumen, rumen microbiology has revealed uh, unique uh, microbes. For example, neocalimestics, which is a anaerobic fungi. Because previously, uh, fungi is known to as aer aerobes. Okay, but now we know that they are also anaerobic fungi. Okay. So, knowing the processes in rumen has allowed uh, the farmers to develop better feed to allow faster and better growth of the ruminants. So it's a very big industry. So initially, they thought if they feed the cows with starch, more starch, then the cows will grow faster because starch is e easier to digest. So if, if starch is easier to digest, then uh, they were hoping that this will allow the cows to grow bigger and faster. However, uh, when they did this, the cows died because of acidosis. It seems that the change of diet into starch, starchy grains, reduce the saliva production by the cows. So the, the saliva is actually an important buffer. Okay, makes up 70% of the Roman liquid. So when the amount of saliva is decreased, the rumen is not buffered properly and it became acidic. Okay, so the higher acid production leads to uh, the ruminant death due to acidosis. Because of uh, this knowledge, microbial ecology knowledge in the rumen processes, they are able to discover why, why this happens. But it did not uh, deter them, so they found out that you can add starch, but slowly, 
and over longer periods of time. So what 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 you need to do is you need to you need to help the microbes adapt to the change in diet. You have to have to help the cows also adapt to the change in diet to ensure that the saliva production remains and also the uh, bacteria is able to adapt to the new diet. So you can add starch, but lesser amounts and over longer periods of time. Okay, so that's this knowledge has also led to the formulation of better feed. So nowadays, the feed is optimized for the growth of the cows. It depends. Uh, if you are growing the cow for for meat, then you have special feed that will promote uh, meat production. If you are in into dairy dairy farms, then you have to find the uh, feed.